So one of our subscribers reached out and wanted to get Rebreather certified by Woody. So we took him out diving this past weekend. Let's see how he did. Hello everyone, welcome to yet another Cave Divers React. My name is Gus. Hi, I'm Woody. And today we're going to be reviewing footage from this past weekend yes. where we went diving in Florida. Um, as you saw on the intro, one of our subscribers reached out and says, Hey, can you guys certify me? So I sent them to Woody and what do you do? La la last week. I can't wait to show everybody. Let's see how he did. Yeah. So um, the, you know, Patrick, one of our subscribers, he got a rebreather, mm -hmm. came to Georgia, got certified with Woody, um, and we ended up going to Florida and diving. And just to put it in perspective, the certification, the underwater time for his trip, I just want to set this up, was about mm -hmm. 570 minutes of underwater time. Yeah. It started on Tuesday, the class, and ended on Sunday. The first two days the were about 12-hour days. But let's see how he did. I well, keep saying it, the same it, thing. And, of course, you're becoming a tech diver yeah, from a recreational big. diver. So on the dive, since I wasn't, I wasn't teaching, uh, Woody was the instructor, I took my camera. My little Sony 4K, we love this camera, uh, took it out and started shooting some video. This video is actually pretty long. It's 36 minutes long, so I figure we just hit play and just talk about it uh, so people can see what it is like to go on a rebreather dive. So Let's you will see it. us on a wreck called Captain Dan's. That's right. Captain Dan's wreck um, in South Florida. And there were the, th the three of us on a, on a rebreather. I was shooting almost the entire time, except when I hand my camera to Woody, which you will see yeah. on the video. Um, but hopefully this video answers some questions. Number one, for people that are not divers that want to see what it's like, you're going to get to see it. Mm -hmm. uh, we get questions like, for example, how do you communicate? And they're always surprised when, when we tell them that we can actually talk through the rebreather so you get to see that and just the basic question of we would like to see you guys diving yeah so we got that accomplished but i'm really i'm really proud of patrick i yes. want to start off by saying that but let's get into it let's not talk anymore i think this is exciting stuff. let's do it all right so let's go full screen here and let's play it so that was me when i started the video trying to capture that nurse shark that you see kind of uh, swimming back there yeah that too did. late swam away from me she was but. underneath the wreck Big to one. It way under, see the bottom part? That's Patrick right there. Look at him. Looks awesome. That's his second day in the ocean. Now, for those of you who are divers and watching this, one of the things that you'll notice is the complete lack of noise. All those, those bubbles. Like every time you watch a, a scuba video, it's like. By the way, listen, I think you can hear us talking. Yes. Yeah, that's you sing. Okay. By the way, everybody, I sing when I die. I'm so <laughs> happy. All right, let me tell you what I was doing here, guys. On the very bottom of the ocean, there's tons of life. So I love getting close to the bottom. I'm not going to crush the bottom. And I love the macro life. I happen to like the little environments as much as the big stuff. But when I see some, an ability to go under a wreck, Gus, I can't help myself. Can you? <laughs> it's like a magnet. I just got to go under and look under there. Yeah. And I never know what I'm going to see. And particularly, though, because I knew Gus was looking for lionfish. That's right. Uh, one of the things that you'll notice that I'm carrying um, later on on the video is I'm carrying a Sioux Keeper and two spears. So I was looking for lionfish who are invasive here in the Atlantic Ocean. And um, humans are their only, um, you know, their only threat basically so by the way my one. fins are pink in there they don't yeah. come out pink in the video but i think that's important point to point out no added light uh in this video i wasn't i wasn't shooting with a light so hey patrick good hey, job patrick. my man killing it so you see there's no bubbles this is what a rebreather looks like you're recycling your same breath over and over and over so no bubbles come out of it by the patrick way is the, breathing but at the yeah. beginning of his class he did not know he was only flutter kicking. He yeah. still does, and that's okay. He's not in an over environment. Look at his trim. He's like look at his trim. Yeah, and we awesome. worked on that from day one in the pool, everybody. Day one. And you'll notice he's frog kicking more and more. Yeah. I kept encouraging him to try those. He's doing awesome. I'm really proud of him there. Look at him. By the way, this is also my submission video to become Cameraman Gus. Blue World because I shot some of this video 
back kicking. Excellent nice. job, Gus. It's pretty good. Sorry I didn't <laughs> give you a little. Okay, we're looking. Okay, so this is this is a part that I think people don't know. I, some people that watch the show know this, but Woody believes he can talk to fish. No, no, no. This is. I do talk to no, fish. You, all right, that's not a. So thing. what I was doing. He, listen, I'm gonna be quiet for a second. Okay, so what I was doing there. I'm not gonna pause it, but that's when I saw a lionfish, and I'm like, I'm gonna pause it for a second. I was talking to the. There's a few little fish underneath that thing. They were babies, so yeah. I my baby talked them, and they came up to me for a second. When I start only after I started my way, and I get in a position, and I have my fingers moving in a certain way, and then they come to me, and then I they went back, and I like I leave them alone. Yeah. All right, so you can see a lionfish there. So, of course, I go bananas, finally spot one, and I hand Woody the camera so I can kill this guy. Yes. Gus. Hunter. Oh, yeah. oh. Just, just take this. <laughs> finally, you saw it. <laughs> but you can hear talking. Look. Listen. Gus Gonzalez. You can hear the whole thing. Ladies and gentlemen. Ladies and gentlemen. Let's see if he can do it. Let's see if he can do it. Like, yeah, you can understand everything. Okay. Okay. Let's load it and... Yes! <laughs> he got more excited than me. Good job. Bye bye. Bye bye. <laughs> I can't help. I talk a lot on my rebreather underwater. Yeah. If it's I hard to do this like like uh, neutral if because I there's so much going on. You did great. You you look great there. Look, yeah. if we get to dive with any of you all, we're, we're going to get excited with you and talk with you. And that's part of my point of this video. Have fun. Guys, we're underwater together in this amazing world. Get excited. Live in the moment. You know, I've dove. I've dove this wreck many times, and I was just as excited about this dive. By the way, this was a double dip, two hour dive. We did not have to come up for two hours. And it's about, Gus, what would you say there? Are we about 110 feet? Uh, about right 105 or so. 105. <laughs> I, I do. I do take video of my computer at points to catch the dive time and the deep, deep, the depth. Here we go. One lionfish. <laughs> Good job on killing one. One single one. <laughs> I'm sorry, everybody. I'm sorry. I don't know. I'm sorry. 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 I'm all right, we're so. moving on. Yeah. Looking for more lionfish at this point. We're not inside. Obviously not inside the wreck there. And we're, you got to look under stuff. Gus and I were talking about that. Yeah. They're, they're always hiding, looking. So I'm trying to get in an angle so I can look underneath the wreck. And um, that's what I'm doing. I'm looking to see if I could spot any for Gus. And I know it looks like you're touching the bottom, but no, it's no, no, no. impressive how... You know, he is like one inch from the bottom, but not touching it. If he touches it, then you would see the puff, right? And here I'm doing a, a right leg kick only. See how my left fin is near the wreck? So I was trying to use the right leg more so I don't kick the wreck. Right. I don't want my left leg smashing the life on the wreck. That's right, oh, so good, what, good job. 105. 46 minutes into this dive. And a 1-3 PO2. It's funny, I, I did the same. Yeah. Gus is used to hearing me on that. I'm looking so hard for you, Gus. I can't.
Yeah, this dive was really cool because they allow us to do what is known as a double dip, which is while the open circuit divers do two dives with a tank each, and they have to do all the surface interval, we actually get to stay on the wreck. So if you notice, by this time, we're 46 minutes into this dive at 100 feet. All of the open circuit divers are gone. Uh, only rebreather divers remain. There's a couple of other rebreather divers, uh, and you will see them, you know, a little bit later. But you can see it's only us. Rebreather divers at this point. Everybody else is up on the boat, waiting about an hour to come back down. This was a two-hour dive for us. And now we're going to head down one of the decks. So it's really cool because it's wide open. A lot of the wrecks off of Fort Lauderdale, they cut big holes. So even though at times it may look like we're penetrating, we actually never do. There's always a swim out, I don't know, usually within 10 feet away of us. Yeah, pretty It may close. look like we're deep inside of something, but yeah. we never are. Even if you don't see it in camera, uh, you see like that, like that hole up there. There's always like a hole right away that That's you can right. get out of. That's right. And I try my best to give you like the best of both worlds. Like I did some penetration behind these guys, trying to follow them. Although I'm carrying that Sioux Keeper, which was humongous. You can hear it at times uh, that I'm like moving it around to try to get through the, the doorways and whatnot. Um, but I also did some um, just filming them going into the, into the wreck and then out of the wreck. So I didn't go in all the way. Although in this one, this one case I did. I haven't seen this. This is my first time, and yeah. I'm reliving this dive. Which but this is good. I mean, look at Patrick with fins up, right? Look at He's that. He's still flutter kicking, but fins are up, which is yes. great. Remember, he just got certified. Yep. But we worked on that from day one, even in the pool, and he really wanted to improve that, so he practiced in Blue Grotto just his kicks. Yep. And we're just looking around, looking in every nook and cranny. Those little bubbles are called his overpressure valve. So when his counter lungs get too full, it'll push, it'll release a little bit of air out of that overpressure valve. That's not bubbles from his unit leaking or probably coming out of his mouth. Yeah. The Viz was about 30 feet, we all estimated that day. Mm -hmm. um, water temp was a little chilly for me it was 80 degrees, 80 degrees. i was right. wearing a five mil plus a five mil hood and vest around my core that's mm -hmm. what i wear in that and i was wearing seven pounds four on the left shoulder three on the right i like a little bit of an offset because on the kiss spirit the first stage of the o2 is sitting on your right butt so it tends to lean you right a little bit yeah this thing right here we always carry a reel and SMB in South Florida because there's current, so the boats will require that. There was like a little traffic jam in this one. I remember being inside and like took a uh, minute. We were following what are you guys here. Doing? Well, what You're I was following the other rebreather diver. I was following right? another rebreather diver, yeah. and when they went in this next room, they sat there for a long time right at the entranceway, so I. I couldn't go in, and then they finally moved through, and I could see there was an easy in, but a directly exit out. Right. So then I went in. But this is this is a big difference, right, on, on training. So you're a cave diver. You can see your fins up high, right, staying up high to not silt out that corridor or whatever, whereas Patrick is fins down, right? And again, he, he is brand new. He's not a cave diver. He's brand new, of course. Um, but it's like just automatically like you're not thinking about it. It's just we are always head down, you know fins up And you see when you start swimming your fins go up close to the ceiling Now I'm just sort of up upright a little bit there because I'm, like, I'm, I'm oh. looking and what we're gonna do is we're gonna go in there and then go up a staircase Yeah So I was trying as I go in here. I'm trying not to move my fins. So those guys will have visibility. So I, That's right. I didn't want to kick when I went through there so that they would not be silted out. Now he's going to go in, and, and I don't know if he kicked or not because he was right behind me. Yeah, a little bit of kicking. That's okay. Yeah, it's okay. He's you know, getting his balance. Mm -hmm. And then 
And you can see that you, you go in, but you have direct exits right away. To right, go right, back right. Down. I mean, look, there's an exit there. There's an exit behind me. Everywhere. everywhere. Yeah, yeah. They don't. We don't. We don't do any penetration diving. Or we at, would be laying line. At his level. At, right. You know. If we were going to do that, we would be laying line like you and I. Yeah. So you can see you go in, but you could immediately make a right turn there and go right out. Right yep. out the door or window, whatever that was. Okay. He did a pretty good job, you know, yeah. going in there and not really kicking too much up. But it's really cool to explore all these different... Look at that's a staircase that was on the... You know, on the rack, going so up So much to easier to go up the staircase <laughs> when you're swimming. By the way, those are, those are not rope. Those are actually leftover wiring from the rack. There's a lot of, like, wire. Yeah. Thick, though, not little. So here, I lost you guys. I don't know where you went. Did you really? Honestly, yeah. I was, I was just trying to capture from behind where you swim, and then I went back behind you, and I'm like, uh, where do you go? Zookeepers on the way, coming through. And you can see I turned the camera at some point, and I'm like, I don't know. Really? <laughs> like, I'm talking to myself. Like, But I, I remember seeing you pretty shortly after again. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So somehow we reconnect. We ran into each other. You Look at all the openings. It's great. Okay. Uh, Listen. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I had no idea. I did. Yeah. Uh, that's funny, Gus. I didn't know that was going on. I don't know. I, don't know. Oh. I think I saw a diver outside, so I'm like, okay, let's head this way. This may have been the bridge, by the way, with all those yeah. openings. Look at Gus. He's just floating there, not hitting the roof, just hovering nicely. Right in the middle. And plenty of room for him to get out. And he probably is looking looking for us. Now he probably will bubble here as he's going up. Release some of the bubbles from the, the cow. Fish. There was a lot of fish in this wreck, man. Like tons of it. Beautiful. Yeah. Such an awesome dive. I'm like, where are these guys? Now you see why I love Fort Lauderdale. Yeah. By the I, way, there was I actually no look back to see if I silted anything, and you can see it looks fine. And then I, you just Hello, showed up. What I'm the like, heck? what? Hello. Where did you come from? <laughs> you guys are. See the barracuda up above? By the way, current oh. was minimal, and we're yeah. in the Gulf Stream. Yeah. This is another, another good example of frog kicking where. You see that Woody is kicking and then sliding, right? He is kicking and going. You don't you don't just frock it, frock it, frock it, frock it like no desperate. Need to. No need you just to. kick and let it ride. Kick and slide. See? Ooh. We'll go for a few feet. And then go another one. And let it ride. Smooth. Okay, that is good. <clears throat> so many rooms to explore. Yeah. So I'm always like, oh, oh, I see a window. I, I gotta, I gotta go and look in or something. Yeah, I think in this next one, I decided to stay from outside and capture it from outside. Okay. But here's a good example of you know you entering a room just smooth, right? Try not to kick, just. Pull yourself in. No silting, no kicks, like very minimal movement on the fins to prevent the silting. And you can see the silt is all on the floor or whatever that that bottom there. Nothing came up. Now I tell Patrick, you go. And I was doing that because I I just knew they were in back of me, so I did not want them to have a cloudy entrance. Right. So I tell Patrick, Patrick is going in. You can see he's kicking more. Once again, this is part of the training he doesn't okay. have yet, yes. right? He's going to get better at this over time. I think he did pretty he did good, awesome. man. That's really good that. job right there, Patrick. Yeah. Floating around in another room. He's not on the, not on the bottom. And he's, he's just following me, and I'm, I'm oh, trying to go real Sideways slow. through that hole. That's awesome. Good job. That was great. And then he did a little helicopter kick there. 
to look this way and then turn around again and head it out for those of you coming to our meetup next year it's a yes. very likely you will dive captain dan with us That's awesome. very very likely see how easy the the, the exits are everybody there's, you're never really too deep inside of the wreck, which makes it wonderful. Yeah. can't remember what I was doing here or where I was going, just exploring. Yeah, looking everywhere. Those socks I'm wearing are pink, in case anybody was curious about the color. Nobody was curious. Well, here we are. so quiet. You can still hear me breathe. Just listen. <laughs> he only has one. We all only have one 40 cubic foot bailout tank because we were running a profile that, that would easily, easily get us back to the surface with plenty of air, including any deco we would have built up. And we didn't have much deco, like five or six minutes worth or something like that. Yeah. Patrick Stream looks awesome. I mean, man, he's been diving rebreathers for four days when this happened. And look already how awesome he looks. I wish I looked like that four days into my rebreather and he knows, career. And he knows nothing else other than to right. dive like that. Right. And I think it's so important. I mean, it's so important to learn to be on trim. Right away. Uh, right away, buoyancy and everything. Because later on, when you move on, if you ever become... A cavern diver or a cave diver is so important to have the right trim. The right tank trim, too. I mean, you can see yeah. your tank is already, you know, it, it's perfectly perpendicular, well, not perpendicular, parallel with bit, your body. It could yeah. be a little It's a, a little, little bit because, tweaky, a little because those uh, aluminum tanks tend floaty. to float a yeah. little bit. Uh, so, like, Patrick, for example, he snapped it on his butt plate. I think if he did his, like, hip D-ring, it would have been a little though. bit yeah. down. Yeah. So those are little adjustments that you get over time. But then you look at other, you know, rebreather divers, oh, and they they look kind of like how I looked when I was, you know, starting. And this here is you back kicking, uh, back kick, so I could get out of that window. Yeah, but so you see right here, the trim is kind of vertical. Th th that's not us, guys. We were right. these are other rebreather divers that we found. Yeah, we we would not have our tanks quite, you know, like that. Right. I don't. We don't know them. They just happen to be diving it as well. So. It's a blast of the past because this is how I looked, you know, before I, I did my cave training. Um, you know, in the, the ocean is really, really big, so you tend to be more relaxed when it comes to trim. You know, people dive vertical all the time. It looks like they were running a marathon instead of diving. Um, but um, I think that you're doing a good job by pushing for that trim and buoyancy from the beginning. So that's good. I really care about that with, with my students. I'm more aware of it, as you said, now than ever due to cave diving and right. due to other instructors that have helped me, like Ed Sorensen and Mike. We're about to hit an Lisa. hour at 93 feet. That's awesome. So I'm... I'm always looking on the side of the wreck. There's just tons of little life. Yeah. We're doing a little selfie for... Yeah, because Neil Patrick was behind me, although he's swimming away from me. Oh, no, that's the other rebreather diver. Yeah. yeah. He's right behind me, what I remember. There's another one. You can see there's, like, no water in my mask. People are, like... There's no way you can dive with a beer. Like, you always are going to have water in your mask. No. You find a mask that fits, and it just works. Oh, this Lots is that. of life on this wreck. Man, I, they had some really big parrotfish. I've never seen them, like, that big. So pretty. That one was all blue. Swimming away from us. Look at all those fish above it. So nice just to glide up to the other decks there. You just, yeah. you just float up there. You don't even have to kick. And I was now looking up at these fish. I'm like, man, look at that school. Right. 
That's when people are like, Gus, how can you be pro cave diving but not dry caving? Because going up is effortless when you're diving. You're in a cave and you look up and it's 100 feet is, you know, the continuation. Yeah. You don't have to rappel or climb up or use whatever. You just swim up. It's so much easier. Yeah, that would have been a quite the climb of that little float up we just oh, did. Oh, man. You'd be climbing with rope. That would have been horrific. I think I said beautiful there. Yeah. There's a lot of life on the wreck. I'm just, I'm just looking, but I think this may be the area where I see the little baby box fish. I was like blown away by this thing. <laughs> All these fish were babies at some point. I may have talked to this little kitty. I think I did to bring him, bring him out. I'm looking for various <laughs> species. That's that one foot kick I like to do if I'm near the wreck. Sometimes it's little. To keep the momentum. Oh, here we go. Okay, here it comes. I'm gonna stay quiet here. <laughs> yes, found him. Look at Patrick. He's like, I don't know. <laughs> it's hilarious. What's he doing? Talking to fish. That's what he does. Because they understand me. I can't help it. I talk fish. I'm, trying to ba I'm going to back out because I want them to see this little adorable box fish. Tiny little babies <laughs> swimming around. So, Patrick, take a look. I mean, take the time to look it's at like the it's marine okay. life. It's, a, it's just oh, a fish. Awful. Look, I get close because I'm like, what, what's the... Why are we stopping here? What? Did you get him? No, yeah. that's not him. Yeah, Where yeah, is he? Yeah. There he yes. Is. Good job. There he is. Look at that. Look at that guy. A juvenile. <laughs> yeah. He is tiny. We get it. Didn't want to leave that little baby. I just wanted to, that was so much of an environment right under that ledge. I could have sat there for 20 minutes and just look at that their little world right there. They lived their entire life on that little ledge right there. Wow. The whole world is going on right there. We'll, we'll go back in April and visit it. It's awesome. It's just, just, reliving this is great. Yeah, yeah I want to go diving. Again. We just did this yesterday. <laughs> Sometimes on this wreck, where we are right now, you're just where we're just floating around. Yeah. You would have to hold on to the wreck. You would have to, or you would be literally gone. And I mean gone like a mile or two away gone, because mm -hmm. the current can be ripping. But because sometimes it's not like that. I'm not remembering this part. I don't know where I went. I'm trying to do modified flutter kick there. It's obviously important to be aware of your size so you and where you are so you don't kick and destroy the environment, right? Very important. He's, he's getting there. He really yeah. did it better and better. Uh, all right. Well, something caught my attention. I can tell. I'm off, off to a new spot of the wreck. Yeah. Great job filming, Gus. You were all over this. A little bit here. We got to some place. I think at this point, I noticed my gloves are dirty. So I start filming my own gloves. <laughs> All right, so that was 66 minutes into this two hour dive. I'm like, oh, damn. My favorite gloves. Oh well. Those gloves are awesome, by the way. They have Kevlar. Like, when I go, 
lionfish. Just a little bit of protection for those needles they have. Just in case. Um, but yeah, they're pretty awesome. So if you do go diving with me, you will see me spending time just looking on the outer ledges of a wreck because stop and do that. You cannot believe how many species are just living in various environments there. And I just love that. Yeah. And on the rebreather, you're so quiet that they they don't scatter away, man. Those fish are just right in my face, you know, and that's when I, I have a little sometimes chat with them and they're cool with that. Chat. Oh, well, my fin did hit that ledge. I don't like that. For did it? I I'm see. waving at. I do wave at these guys. Hello. <laughs> Hello. See, people watch these videos and they think this is all stage. Like, this is just you doing this for, for views or whatever. This is every single dive we've oh. ever done forever. Yes. And, and I'm glad Patrick went because now we have a witness that this is. Completely who? unrehearsed nonsense. Wait, pe who doesn't wave and be polite to fish? Why would I not? I, I don't. don't know. I don't know any they other way. It's so cool, right in this area, man. This is such a beautiful spot. Yeah, there's so many, like so much fish in this wreck. Everywhere. And the rebreather just allows you to be, like Gus said, just quiet, neutral. And just look around. Nice, Gus. Nice shots. Now I'm trying to get some of these bigger ones. Beautiful. Look at the big parrotfish. That thing is huge. Look how close I was able to get to him. My camera doesn't have zoom, so all of these is the real distance that I'm from the fish. <clears throat> Look at their light, their day. They're just eating, eating various things. The algae, they, they can eat algae off the coral. So they're keeping that environment healthy, all those fish, by eating like that. This is purity of the world. I always say if you're a spiritual believer and there is a higher power, this is right where... The, that higher power shows off. Perfect ecosystem going on right there. And you just want to respect it. Two hours we got to spend under there because of the rebreather. No rush. No bubbles. There's Patrick enjoying it as well. But not as not only do I do it with my students just to stop, it, it's actually great practice for them. To have to be so close, but yet. That's my way of saying Hello. I'm right here. Hello. Oh, yeah, Barracuda. Look at that, like tens of thousands of fish. That look, is it look beautiful at this. shots. Just looks like rain. It's oh, so man. many of them. Amazing. Amazing, amazing shot you got there. Wow, I would love to have that just as a screenshot. I mean, that <laughs> yeah. I remember. Once the the like brightness or every or whatever adjusts, you can see even more of them. I mean, but still look at wow. that thing. Wow. So many. <laughs> like bubbles went through and they just moved out of the way. Like, ugh. What is that? I remember being there and I, 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 I really didn't want to go anywhere. We were surrounded by thousands of them. Look at this. It was so cool. There's our line, by the way, back up to the to our boat. Yeah. It's tied off on the top part of the wreck. And Maybe I'm a like, little bit more. A little bit more time? Okay. I love the, I think I think it's called a batfish that I caught. I don't know if you can see him right there at the bottom. Nice. Looks like a rock, but I caught him trying to eat another fish. 
just wanted to have a final conversation with these guys. Look at that thing. So many fish. Beautiful. You're like, come here, let me pet you. <laughs> I see your hand. Like, what, what are you doing? I'm, they're my friends. I just want them to know that I thank them for letting me be there and letting me look at them. I was thanking them. <laughs> look at that, so many. Some healthy waters and Gulf Stream flowing, nutrients coming through, and tons of fish. Let's see if I got that, uh, that beautiful. Fish. Look, you're surrounded. Look at those guys. You blend in with the fish. It's so relaxed right there. I'm, I'm reliving the relaxing right at that moment. Yeah. It's just Nothing matters. You don't think about it. Look at it. Boom. Boom. Nice he almost shot. got him. He almost got him, that bad fish. Then I then I kept my camera on, and I'm like, I want to see this guy eat something. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. I just put him in the middle, and you guys are swimming behind it. But this guy's my focus now. I want this guy to eat something. So I just try to not move. Can you all see the addiction? Can you and see be why? quiet. Why it's so addictive. Look at that. I know people do yoga, but that's yoga. <laughs> that's yoga. This is better than yoga. I don't know what yoga. I don't do yoga. That's my <laughs> yoga. And I actually feel better there than I do here on land. I really do. Come on, dude. Eat something. Yeah, I'm trying to communicate with I mean, he blends in so well. Look at that thing. Beautiful. That's awesome. Beautiful shots you got. I'm like, dude, it's a bad fish. Look at him. I don't even know if you saw him. I'm like, go ahead and buy the computer strap. Do something. That fish didn't eat anything. We just stay there. So I moved away from him. But uh, yeah, that was uh, pretty much the end of the recording. Uh, I think at some point I turned the camera around just to film myself. Job. Right before I, right before I close. Yeah, that was right. it. Great dive. Yeah, it was. Um, great job, it was Patrick. Awesome. Great job. Great job for tar great. whatever. Photo Great guy. job, Patrick, for sure. And um, that's how he closed his class, by the way. This was his final dive. So he got to close his dive with a two-hour dive on Captain Dan with all that life. Yeah, and just in case if people are wondering, this thing right here in front of my eye is a, it's actually a computer. It's called a Nerd from Shearwater. And even though it looks like I shouldn't be able to see anything, it's kind of like on the side. And you can see, I can see through here, through this hole right here. And um, unless I look up to the right, I, I just don't see it. It doesn't bother me at all. Now, looking at it from this perspective, this is the end of the video. Looking at it from this perspective, it would look like it covers a whole lot of my vision, but it doesn't. It's awesome. You have one, and Patrick has one as yes. well. Um, but anyway, we just wanted to take you all into a dive with us rebreather dive with us for 30 plus minutes this is what we get to see and um that's why it's an addiction how and awesome the, is it and those that are going to be coming with us on the meetup that we're having in april yeah april 28th we're going to be doing a lot of this together and i'm going to talk and i'm going to sing and i hope you will talk and sing <laughs> with us because gus has started to enjoy and learn the language as well I don't know about fish. that. Fish. The language is called fish. 
Yep. Um, we have reacted to other videos in the past. I know that a lot of people like to watch us dive. Um, for example, this video that I'm going to put on the corner right here is called Rebreathers rebreather divers in action and you guys will be able to see us doing some other dives we, we review that in the past um and we also even react to our own cave dives like this other video that i'm putting right here on the corner where we went into a dive at jock hole and people can see us dive and react to our own dives as well yes i hope that people enjoy this um i think that obviously if you're a diver you kind of know how beautiful oh, yeah. it is but uh, for those of you who, due to health reasons or because you're, you know, this is just not your thing, uh, but you want to see how it is out there, especially with rebreathers, how quiet it is, this video was for you. Um, this one's making my eyes. I just, I don't want to have them fully open right now. I just want to have them kind of <laughs> like this chill. after watching this. Yeah. Um, mm. But anyway, other than that, if you uh, like the video, please go ahead and subscribe as as always. And you know, there's an animation uh, reminding you to subscribe as well. And if you like the beanie, shopdivetalk.com. That thing is legit. Love I think it. it's our number one most sold beanie. Everyone loves this thing. Pink. Well, it's kind of like uh, looks like a. Mm -hmm. What what should we call it? It's like a, so I don't know. It's so like cotton candy type of thing. You have some action going. But anyway, uh, love the merch. If, please, you go and want to want to support us, shopdivetalk.com. Other than that, thank you so much for watching, and we'll see you on the next one. Bye, everybody.